Hey everybody, this is Adam from A to Z's Tiny Woodshop. Thanks for stopping by to check out the video. This video is more of a documentary than a how-to, but if you watch with a keen eye, you'll see many tips and tricks, especially with regards to small shop storage and organization. Since this isn't a how-to, I'm gonna try to narrate as little as possible and instead let you just watch how the project unfolds and pick up on how things come together for yourself. If you'd like more detailed information about some of the measurements and materials or tools used in the video, make sure you check out the description below. And if there's something that's not there and you'd like to know about, feel free to post a comment below and ask. This apron and Nicholson style vice project was inspired by a similar video by Tom Fidgen of Unplugged Woodshop and Woodworking School in Toronto. I've been a fan of his for a long time now and hopefully someday if time and money allow I'll be able to make a trip or two up to Toronto to study under his stewardship. I don't know him personally but I've chatted with him through email a few times and he gave me his blessing and permission to use his music in this video. So I figured I'd pay homage to him for the ideas and allow me to use his music. I put a link to the inspiring video in the description below. If you haven't already, make sure you stop by and check out the video in his channel. And aside from being a very talented musician and traditional woodworker, he just seems like a genuinely really cool guy as well. So far what you've seen me do in the video has been pretty simple and straightforward. I've just cut the apron to length and cut the vice face to length. And then I remove the old temporary vise and I'm going to be squaring up the bench top face here in a minute. Here I'm just measuring and marking for the 4 inch lag screws that are going to go into the apron to help hold it to the actual bench in addition to the glue up. Uh, since the bench apron is 78 inches long, I came in 4 inches on each end of the first uh, lag screw and then just spaced them 10 inches apart thereafter. Since my bench top is 2.5 inches thick, I just marked a line an inch and a quarter in on this bench apron so that when I drill the lag screws through it, they would go into the center of the actual bench top. I used a one inch diameter force nut bit to drill some flat bottom holes to countersink the four inch lag screws that I'm gonna be using to secure the apron to the bench. If you're wondering why I drilled them so deep, you'll see why later on in the video, and I think you'll agree it's a nice touch. I decided to incorporate the use of some hand tools here instead of power tools. Although I don't have enough hand tools to do everything by hand, I find that I enjoy my time in the shop much more when I'm not using so many power tools. If you wonder what I'm doing here, after each hole that I drill, I move the board so that as I drill through it, I'm drilling on top of a dog hole in my bench so I don't put any unwanted holes on my bench top. I wanted to make sure that I had smooth surfaces on the boards, especially the part of the apron that was going to be glued up to the existing workbench top. So I just used my Wood River 4.5 smoothing plane here just to touch them up and make sure that they're nice and smooth. If you like this wall mounted plane holder, make sure you check out one of the other videos on my channel on how to make a block plane till. The process is the same whether it's a block plane or a regular hand plane. 
The vice screw is an inch and 11 64ths in diameter, so I rounded up to an inch and a quarter and then measured and marked so that I could drill the hole and then later mortise it out with a chisel. As I mentioned, the vice face is 24 inches long, so I measured six inches in from each side, and that's where I placed the vice screw hole as well as the hole for the inch and a half square red oak dowel that will be used as a tracking guide on the other side. I really wanted to cut this by hand, but admittedly, I'm horrible with a handsaw at cutting a straight line, and I need a lot more practice. So I decided to go with what would give me the best results, and, and that was my table saw sled. The blade that I used had a full 1 8 inch kerf on it and a flat tooth grind, and that gave me a square flat cut along the edge of the tenon. And then I measured, marked, and cut the 1 half inch square dowel to the same length as the vice screw. You'll see later how this is used as a tracking guide on the vice face on the opposite side of the vice screw. I'm just cleaning up the tenon a little bit, and then I cut the end of the tenon in half for the wedge that will later hold the tenon in place in the vice face. I also use my hand drill to drill a hole at the end of the cut to prevent any splitting of the tracking guide. Just a quick pre-assembly, just to make sure everything's going together and fitting together the way I was intending it to. Then I turned my attention to resurfacing the bench top. I used my low angle jack plane to hog off a lot of the material, and then followed that up with my joiner plane, and finally with my smoothing plane. I installed the tracking guide and before adding any glue or the wedge that holds it in place, I checked to make sure that all four sides were perfectly square. And then I trimmed any parts of the tenon or wedge that were protruding from the vice face and then smoothed it with my block plane. Reset all the lag screws and spread the glue just to make the process of attaching the apron to the bench a little bit easier. It was right about this time that I started to get pretty giddy about this. I was getting really excited now that I was able to see how well this was coming together and I was super pleased with it.
Now you'll see what I mentioned earlier about why I drilled so deep to countersink the lag screws. I decided to use a one inch red oak dowel just to glue in and act as a plug to hide the screw faces. It's purely cosmetic, but I think it adds a nice aesthetic appearance to the face of the apron as well. I intentionally mounted the apron and the vice face a little bit less than an eighth of an inch proud, knowing that afterward I would use my jack plane and my jointer plane to bring them down to the level of the bench top. And this gave me a nice seamless glue joint. I also did the same thing with the one inch dowel plug, leaving them intentionally quite a bit proud so I could come back and flush cut them and then plane them and sand them smooth. The vice screw is really simple and straightforward to install. Just two screws attaching the front and then four screws to attach the nut that goes on the back side of the apron. I installed two one inch square pieces of pine on each side of the guy rod underneath the bench and just screwed them in place. And before doing so, I wiped them down liberally with finishing paste wax. That just helps them to prevent them from pinching and binding and helps them slide in and out a lot easier. I used my jack plane to put a slight chamfer on all the 90 degree edges and then my orbital sander with a progression of grits from 120 to 400 on all the surfaces that we're going to receive the oil finish. Now that I'm just about done, I just want to include a few clips on just a few of the ways that I intend to use the vise, as well as the placement of the dog holes and how I incorporate the use of bench dogs for various different methods of holding my stock. So using the vise like this to edge plane uh, medium to small pieces shows how you really get a lot of surface area and grip on the stock. And I'll show how I edge plane longer boards towards the end with one of the last demonstrations using bench dogs in the apron as well as the vise. Here I'm just setting up to use side clamping pressure using a couple of bench dogs in the actual bench and then a couple in the face of the vise. I find this really beneficial as opposed to using a hold fast or a hold down or any type of clamp. The side pressure really uh, opens up the entire piece of stock to work on without having to worry about moving and relocating anything, as well as the four different points of contact it really adds a lot of gripping pressure. Periodically you'll see me apply just regular old candle wax to the sole of my planes. I find that it really helps the sole of the, the plane move along the wood that I'm working on. Some people use oil in a can or a rag in a can. Um, the wax has always worked well for me. I've never had any issues with it. I stick with that. Here you'll see I'm having a little bit of trouble with that dog in the uh, base of the vise. I'm going to have to just lightly sand out the hole make it a little bit easy for that one to come in and out. You'll see clamping like this enables you to work on the end grain of a board, whether you're cutting dovetails or planing and smoothing the end grain. Um, since there's 12 inches of space between the guide and the screw for the vise, um, that's plenty of room for me, and uh, it eliminates the need to build or add a mox and vise. So it's pretty versatile and does everything that I need it to do. Here you'll see how I'm able to edge plane and joint longer boards by just inserting a couple bench dogs into dog holes that I drilled into the apron. I made sure that they were drilled uh, in a perfectly straight line, level and parallel to the bench top. I also included one inside the face of the vise so that the board wouldn't be riding on top of the vise screw. 
The vise itself gives me all the clamping pressure I need to hold the board securely in place and prevent it from moving while the bench dogs keep it straight and parallel. Last thing I did was just apply a thin coat of true oil. Uh, that's my go-to finishing oil for curly maple and black walnut, and uh, it doesn't seem to yellow nearly as much as linseed oil. So I'm really pleased with the way it came out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider uh, giving it a like, and I welcome your comments. And as always, if you want to see more videos, uh, please consider subscribing to A to Z's Tiny Wood Shop.